Hi there. Um, welcome. My name is Stephanie Keenan Ray. I am a holistic esthetician. My business is called Natural Beauties. And today I wanted to share with you a class all about natural skincare, the basics around it, what plays a role in aging for our skin, and how we can address those concerns that we have for our skin and how we can address them naturally with all natural solutions, natural uh, tools and options that will keep our skin healthy and youthful and vibrant um, as long as possible. And we will discuss some of the, the key points that really um, play a role. So I'm gonna quickly share my screen so that we can uh, go right into this class. And it's just gonna be lots of fun. So I have been into holistic healing, natural solutions since I was a kid. I um, was in sixth grade when my mom was in a car accident. And so I was with her. And so we were in the car accident together. Her shoulder froze and about three months later, um, she could no longer lift racks of clothing off of the racks at the um, the place that she worked. She was a uh, manager of a department store of a women of the girls department. And so she could no longer like move the clothes, do the thing. So we started seeing a chiropractor on a friend's advice. And between chiropractics and physical therapy, I watched her regain her health. Um, I also, it turned out, had slipped this in my neck and my back from the car accident. It was about three months later that her shoulder froze. So this is when we found these things out. We, you know, I went to get checked out just to be on the safe side and also had a lot of chiropractic um, care for a while um, to fix things and, and adjust things back into place. Uh, and at the time as a sixth grader, I wanted to run off and become a chiropractor, but that was not something that could happen. So I honestly, uh, just started pursuing holistic alternatives. So I taught myself reflexology. I then started learning about, uh, chakras and, um, essential oils and all these different things. And I just kept piling on my knowledge and I really didn't know what I was like, how I was going to use it in everyday life. Um, I went to college hoping to be a chiropractor, went for like a pre-med bio major and uh, organic chemistry kicked my butt and I did not end up a chiropractor, but um, I eventually became a holistic esthetician and I got into it as the economy crashed. So I went back to catering for a while uh, and recently uh, got back into it full time. I had maintained my license all the while, um, practicing on friends and family. Uh, and then as I became a doTERRA wellness advocate, I would educate on skincare. And actually this class evolved right before COVID. I was going to do this class and literally do a facial on a customer um, explaining natural skincare and how we can use natural solutions to care for our skin, to embrace our natural beauty, to age gracefully. Uh, of course, COVID hit and the class ended up online. So um, this is where we're at is me teaching this class, but it also in that happening, it it got me thinking about the factor that I can help uh, people by doing virtual skin consultations and uh, coaching that way in guiding people through those deeper topics of diet, stress, um, nutri you know, nutrition and supplements, um, uh, all the different elements that play a role in our skin health and our aging. Uh, we could talk about them in a private setting virtually. Uh, I could guide people to their skin goals. And if they were local, they could come see me in the, um, 
in the spa as well. So because of COVID, this class turned into an online thing, but it also evolved my business and I became more uh, a holistic esthetician who does skincare in the spa room, but also virtually so that I can reach a broader audience. Because when you're in a spa room, who wants to talk about what they're eating, if they're managing their stress right, if they're um, doing any of the things they should be. They want to relax and not talk. They want to be taken care of and in a whole different realm, right? So this is why I got into um, coaching and and that's a little bit more about me. So let's dive into natural skincare and how we can start caring for our skin naturally. So if it'll let me go, hmm, there we go. All right. So first off, when it comes to skincare, when somebody walks into my room, the first thing I am going to look at is their skin type. So their skin type and what conditions might be occurring on their skin. So we look at their skin type to identify a skin type. We honestly look at the pore size. So are your pores very large? Are they very small? Do they, maybe they're larger here in your T-zone area and then they diminish off to the sides. Um, so uh, a normal skin type, the pores are even all across, not too large, not too small. Uh, so a normal skin type will look very even. Uh, when you touch it, it won't feel tight. It won't feel dry. It won't feel oily. That is a normal skin type. It's basically perfect. Very few people have straight up normal skin. They have a combination typically. So a dry skin type is going to be uh, tight. When you touch it, you're going to feel the dryness in the skin. Uh, you may start to see more fine lines and wrinkles because of the dryness. And then an oily skin type is oily all over. Oh, and when a dry skin type, when you look at the pores, the pores are barely visible because they're so dry. They're like literally squeezed tight with dryness, right? And an oily skin type, the pores are much larger. Um, and so they could be the whole face that is got those larger pores. The skin actually feels oily um, or yeah, it'll feel kind of oily. Uh, and then if it's a combination, it could be any combination of these things. And uh, sensitive also is a type. So your skin, when your skin is sensitive, you can usually tell it's usually somebody with a complexion similar to mine, uh, turns red very easily when you touch it, uh, irritates easily, is very sensitive to products and what you put on it. So you could be any combination, sensitive and dry, sensitive and oily, sensitive and, uh, or, or dry and oily, dry and normal, oily and normal. So a lot of times, so like the typical that everybody knows is that oily, normal um, combination where you've got the larger pores on your T-zone and then they diminish as they go out to the side. So it'd be oily and normal or perhaps maybe oily and dry because there definitely are people who have that happening. Um, so that is our basic skin types. So pretty easy to identify what's going on there. And then um, conditions. So conditions are, what are those complaints that we have with our skin what's happening on our skin is it dark spots so hyperpigmentation age spots as some people call them wrinkles fine lines um the sagging of our skin where the elastin is starting and the collagen is starting to diminish maybe it's dryness um and then so those are the things that we look for especially when it comes to aging and when it comes to aging, the other thing that we have to think about is our, um, our hereditary um, genetics. So somebody who is an oily, like Greek or Italian Mediterranean skin type, they tend to age more gracefully because they've got more oil in their skin. So their skin doesn't dry up 
and wrinkle as easily. They've got this nice glowing hydrated skin. So what was a curse perhaps when they were a teenager because it was oily and they'd break out and have acne now as they age is oftentimes a, um, a blessing. Okay. Whereas if you're more of that skin, thin skinned, fair haired Irish person like myself, I, I, have innately had dry skin my whole life. My mother was like, I've never seen this, a baby with dry skin, what on earth? But that was me. I've always had dry skin. So I do, I'm sensitive and dry. So I have to take care of it. Um, But because of my hereditary um, background, that thinner, drier skin, that's going to perhaps age more rapidly if I don't care for it properly. So we do have to think about these things when we uh, look at someone. So when we are thinking about aging, we also want to think about what plays a role in our aging process. So it could be uh, things like weather, lack of sleep, poor diet, hydration. So if I'm lacking hydration, those wrinkles are going to pop up. If I'm not exercising, uh, my my skin is not getting detoxified. It's not, uh, the cells aren't working properly. So exercise plays a role. When we gain weight and when we lose weight, that affects our aging because sometimes, especially people who yo-yo back and forth, but even that massive gain or loss can affect how our skin looks and um, on a cellular level it affects it. Poor skin care plays a role so if you're not caring for your skin you're going to age faster than if you do care for your skin Uh, and then of course free radical damage from external environmental um, factors such as sun damage, uh, air pollution, toxins in the environment, but also in what we use. I mean, we, as we grow and learn about the things in our environment, there are chemicals in our food, there are chemicals in our products. And so this is something we're going to talk about a little bit more. Um, It's not just that exposure to like chemicals, say, in a toxic work environment, right? It, it could be literally around you every day. Uh, the fumes from our cars, you know, air pollution, stress and inflammation in our body plays a big role in our aging process and how our cells operate. Um, the metabolism of our cells and how they operate plays a role because when the free radicals start to attack our body and break down cells and damage other cells. Um, If we're not, if our cells aren't working properly to fight them off, it's going to greatly affect our aging process on a cellular level. And then of course, um, smoking is, we all know, very bad for our bodies, bad for our aging, bad for our skin and our health. So uh, yeah, we don't like that. Uh, So when it comes to skincare, the first thing we want to think about is just having good skin habits. So the basics, literal basics that you want to start teaching your kids. Um, If you don't have a good skincare habit and um, you might want to think about getting into a good habit. So we want to do this twice a day, morning and night. Uh, cleansing, nourishing, feeding, hydrating our skin. So the first step is always to cleanse our face. That's going to remove dirt and impurities, toxins from the environment, and as well as our makeup if we wear it. And it's going to really also nourish and feed our skin. We then tone our skin because it's going to balance the pH and add some hydration. So, um, When our pH is imbalanced, bacteria can grow on the skin barrier and affect our our cells. So we definitely, 
especially if you're an acneic skin type, um, oily skin type that deals with a little acne breakout, you're going to definitely want to use a toner. A lot of people skip toners thinking that they're useless. They are not useless. So you definitely want to use a toner. And then serums or essential oil blends. I love a nice essential oil blend or a serum. I use them interchangeably, sometimes together. But what this is going to do is really feed your skin with customized ingredients that are going to nourish and protect and um, heal, soothe, do all the things uh, for your skin. And uh, it really helps with that healthy barrier um, in our skin. And then, oops, sorry, I hit the wrong button. Uh, the final step is to moisturize. Now, one thing I will say is I personally love a nice oil moisturizer. So sometimes my serum or my essential oil blend is my moisturizer. But like I said, I am a dry skin type. So come su come winter time, I definitely need to be layering on a, a serum and then a moisturizer because uh, it, it is that added hydration that's going to last longer and maintain a healthy, balanced, smooth, soothed, happy skin. Um, uh, but summertime, you might just want to use your essential oil blend that has a, 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 a nutrient rich carrier oil. So it, it kind of, is flexible. You don't have to necessarily do a four step. And actually there is a fifth step, which would be your sunscreen. Everybody should use your sunscreen, uh, SPF in the morning. Uh, but I did not put that on the slide, <laughs> but you may skip the moisturizer depending. So that'd be something you might want to discuss with me. We can talk about what are your favorite, what, what kind of textures do you like on your skin? What do you appreciate? So some people, an oil-based moisturizer is going to irritate them because they're going to feel oily and greasy. Um, so there's certain things, depends on what kind of oil base you're putting it in because different natural oils absorb at different rates to our skin and also what we're looking to address. So uh, that's where my expertise, my customization can really come into play as far as guiding you and, and helping you further. But let's dig into why natural skincare really, really, really matters. So for me, since I was an, since I went to aesthetic school, it was of the utmost importance that I used natural skincare uh, products because one of the first projects we did in aesthetic school was to analyze the ingredients in three products. And we had this book where we would look and we'd say, okay, what is this pro What is this ingredient used for? Why is this in here? Well, so many of the products that we picked up and that we studied were full of chemicals. They were full of things that just make it last longer on the shelf, uh, things like that. So no real nutritional value, no real um, value to our skin health is just to make it last longer, make it more smooth, make it absorb better. Um, so, you know, different reasons that these different chemicals are in there. But as I have further studied, our natural, our, 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 our skincare products, our household products, our personal care products are just full of chemicals and they build up and they become toxins in our body. So that daily exposure to these chemicals in our personal care products are overwhelming our body. In, in fact, we're being born, like we are in the most toxic overload currently because there's just 
toxins around us everywhere. And there's so many in our products. So women on average, we apply about 20 different personal care products. And before we've even left the house in the morning, we have exposed ourselves to about 168 chemicals in our personal care products. So that's our shampoo, our soap, our conditioner, our um, hair care products, you know, styling products, makeup, perfume, deodorants, lotions, anything you put on your body. And then let's say, oh, whatever you wash your hands with after doing the dishes, you know, all sorts of chemicals. We are loading ourselves with chemicals before we've even walked out the door. And then we walk into the world where there's more toxins coming at us from car pollution, air pollution, uh, whatnot. Men use slightly less products. Um, so therefore they expose themselves to about 85 chemicals before they've left in the morning. And then even teens, it's about, or children, it's about 60 uh, chemicals that they're exposing themselves on a daily basis. Now, the study that blew my mind is that babies are literally being born into uh, toxic overload from mom's personal care products. Uh, these chemicals are being absorbed into our bodies and then via the umbilical cord and the blood, these babies are being exposed. And they did a study looking at newborn babies. They tested their umbilical cord blood and they found 287 chemical toxins in their blood from mom. So that's pretty disturbing that what we're using is then affecting our babies. And um, we also absorb these chemicals, both topically on our bodies, but also when we breathe them in. So let's say you're using one of those spray sunscreens, that cloud of chemicals, you're going to breathe it in, they're going to get into our body. Uh, but they're also going onto your skin. So just, we have to think about all of this. Um, they looked at teenagers and there they had them, they tested their blood in their urine. And in testing these uh, teens, they found 16 hormone altering chemicals. So endocrine disruptors uh, in from their personal care products. And they were uh, phthalates, parabens and triclosans. Um, two parabens, the methylparaben and polyparaben were detected in every single girl in the study. And endocrine disruptors literally mess with our hormones. They block our hormones, our natural hormones from operating correctly, from, from doing their job. Sometimes they mimic them and sometimes they actually um, morph them. And so the, they affect our hormones. They affect our reproductive abilities. They can affect fertility, um, birth rate, uh, birth terms and birth weights. Um, sometimes even causing birth defects. They are known carcinogens. They definitely can people can have allergies to them skin sensitivities asthma as well as it affects our nervous system and just so much so uh, when it comes to endocrine disruptors we really want to pay attention and we also want to pay attention to ingredients that are in our products that are full of all these chemicals so when it comes to natural skincare, we have to be a lot more diligent here in the United States. In Europe, the European Union has banned 1,300 uh, chemicals from personal care products because they have been found to be harmful to health or the environment. Um, a lot of the you know, endocrine disruptors are banned. All sorts of different things are banned. The U.S. only bans 11 ingredients. So we have to do our due diligence. We have to know what are the, the harmful 
ingredients. So this is a list of some of the big ones, the top 12 that I think everyone should know about and why they're so concerning. Um, and try your best to look for products that do not contain these. There are many other ingredients that personally, I also will be like, nope, we don't want that. But this is the beginning base of it. And if you, this image here really, it, it shows you the absolute cost of beauty. The factor that every part of this woman, you, you look at, you know, her body lotion, her deodorants, her hairspray, her nail polish, you know, all have some sort of chemical ingredient that causes health concerns. And that is really concerning because most people don't even think twice about it. Um, you know, when we think about, uh, we don't, we just don't. So here are a couple lists of ingredients and the biggest ones that I want to focusing on our phthalates, which are, um, they're often in nail polishes and fragrances. So fragrance is an ingredient that you will see, and it's actually a different, uh, that's different, but it is in fragrances. And so the phthalates um, can actually, really, they are endocrine disruptors. They affect um, our reproductive uh, abilities, and they are very concerning. Fragrances, so just the term fragrance, when you look at any product and it just says fragrance, that means it's literally a chemical-based fragrance. It's probably made in a lab, um, or it's a perfume that's, again, chemical-based. These can cause allergies, migraines, asthma. It's just not, not, not pretty. <laughs> and, um, especially when there are natural fragrances, natural aromas out there that we could use instead that have far hot, better healing properties to them. Um, parabens. So parabens are also another endocrine disruptor. They affect our hormones, male reproductive abilities, um, and it's found as a preservative in most products of cosmetics and personal care products. Um, and sodium lauryl sulfate, SLS. You have probably seen this in your shampoos, your shower gels, your facial cleansers. This is one that I absolutely will not buy a product that has this in it because it is a known a carcinogen. It is, it affects our nervous system. It affects human development. It's a, again, an endocrine disruptor, just horrible. And then the triclosins that were mentioned in that study of the uh, young girls, um, they are in anti anti perspirants, deodorants, cleansers, uh, hand sanitizers, and they're um, a skin irritant, but they also create an antibiotic resistance. So we actually, it affects our immune system. So those are some of the big concerns with those products. There are so many more. We can really dig into this. I could geek out forever, but the good news is that you can quickly change this just by switching your products. You can reduce the chemical overload in your body within days. So your exposure, you can control and you can control how long this overload lasts in your body. Um, if you're using it continually, these chemicals, they're going to just keep building up. But within days of switching, they did a study out in California. They asked a bunch of girls to just go looking for products just by reading the labels, looking for phthalate free, paraben free, um, personal care products. So just by reading the labels, investigating the products through like websites, like um, the environmental working group that gives you a rating of how safe a product is. They switched their personal care products and within days, 
significantly decreased their paraben exposure or their paraben, yeah, uh, levels in their bodies, the phthalates and the triclosans. So really, it just means that it's in your hands. You can change this and you don't have to be in this state of toxic overload. We can gain control of our hormones, of our health and of our wellness through natural solutions. So one thing I do love is the environmental working group. Uh, the website right here at the top of the page in the purple, it's uh, ewg.org slash skin deep. If you go there, you can actually look up specific products and see and it gets a rating score off to the side here. You can see a, a, a screenshot uh, where the green of a rating of zero to two is a low hazard. Um, the yellow three to six is a moderate hazard and seven to 10 is a high hazard. But what I really love is it digs into every single ingredient and tells you whether that particular ingredient is safe or not and why, you know, how it affects our bodies, our, the environment, because that's the other thing. Endocrine disruptors don't just affect our hormones and our reproduction and our health. They actually affect the environment. So if they get into the water and then the wildlife starts eat, drinking that water, it's getting into their bodies too. So it's actually playing a huge role and they, um, they also play a role in things like um, when you think about sun care, like the chemicals in chemical sunscreens are affecting our oceans and our ocean wildlife, as well as uh, reefs. So there's a whole, that's a whole nother topic, but it, um, it really, it's not just ourselves, but we do have to be cautious and care about ourselves and the environment and the world around us. And by switching to natural solutions, we really can do that. So when it comes to healthy skin, as I mentioned earlier in my intro and talking about what I do, healthy skin really comes from balancing all aspects of our lives. Um, so having proper sleep, managing our stress, maintaining a healthy diet and um, caring for our skin naturally. So all these things matter and they play a big role. One of the most important things is to make sure we're increasing our water intake, boosting our hydration from the inside out that helps our cells work properly and flush out toxins um, so that we can gently detoxify. Uh, one thing I love to do is as an a doTERRA essential oil educator. Um, our oils are 100% pure. Now there are a lot of oils in the marketplace that will tell you they are 100% pure. Not all oils are created equal. Um, they, an essential oil can actually be up to 70% synthetic and be labeled 100% pure because it's not, um, it's not, approved by the FDA so they can kind of get away with rubbish. So uh, one thing that doTERRA does is that they um, third party test our oils before we obtain them from our sources. And if they are 100% pure, then we buy them. So we have them tested in a lab before we even purchase them. Then we also do even more testing to ensure that they maintain being as pure as we have been told um, throughout the process of, you know, distillation, acquiring them, getting them into the United States, making them into our blends, you know, all the things, just testing those oils, making sure they are so pure before they leave the do the doTERRA factories and get to our our clients. Um, now, because of this, because they are so pure, we can say that certain oils that we produce are able to be taken internally. So things that come from fruits and vegetables and plants that we eat are the ones that we do this with. So like peppermint, lemon, um, orange, things like that. 
So the lemon actually comes from the rind of the fruit, the outside of the fruit. When you peel a lemon and you see those little spritz of of moisture going into the air, that's the essential oil coming out of the skin. And it's very, very um, intense. Uh, essential oils are 70 times more, 50 to 70 times more um, powerful than say their herb counterparts. So um, the lemon essential oil is much stronger than just taking a little wedge of lemon and putting it in your water. So you take a little lemon, essential oil, put one drop in your water and drink that down. It actually helps with detoxifying, gently detoxifying our body, um, blocking stress hormones. There's actually a study where if you drink a glass of water with lemon essential oil in it, and then um, they did this study and they realized that doing that blocks the lemon helps block those stress hormones in our brains and our bodies. So so drinking the lemon water is incredible um, for detoxifying and nourishing and hydrating our bodies. Um, so the foundation of all of our health and wellness is eating and nutrition and whatnot. So proper nutrition, getting the water, um, eating more fruits, vegetables, healthy proteins, and less processed food. Because again, those processed foods are loaded with chemicals and preservatives and things that we don't need. We want foods that are going to feed our body, increase our energy, help with our cellular health and wellness, and reduce inflammation and pain in the body. Inflammation is the root of all disease. So when you are eating more fruits and vegetables and less processed foods, you're going to be reducing inflammation naturally. You're going to be caring from your for your body from the inside out. And then we want to think about, well, for next step on the wellness pyramid is exercise. So exercising is so good for our overall health and wellness. Uh, again, reducing inflammation. Uh, but you get this like glow when you exercise, right? I think we all know it. When we go out and exercise, it gets everything pumping well. It gets our body glowing and feeling good. So exercise is really important, um, both for just regular health and wellness, but also for having healthy skin. And then uh, stress and sleep play a huge role in our skin health. Stress can affect our hair. It can affect our skin. Uh, it affects how our bodies repair. Because when do, when do our cells repair? They repair at night when we're sleeping. If we're not sleeping, our cells are not repairing. So it's so important to make sure we are managing our stress so that we can sleep, so that our bodies can heal, so that our gut can heal and absorb nutrients from our food. Um, and, you know, we just, they go hand in hand, stress and sleep. Like if you're stressed, you're probably not sleeping. If you're stressed, your gut is freaking out and things aren't being absorbed and nutrients aren't being taken into our bodies. And then our, our um, immune system suffers and which in turn affects our skin. So it's all connected. Our bodies are one big interconnected system. So they all affect each other. So very important that we manage stress, but also, and find healthy ways to do so. I personally love my essential oils and, um, and have some great rituals that help with that. And then sleep, sleep is key. Um, so it's key to our cellular renewal and repair and just making sure that we have that healthy glowing skin that's going to fight those signs of aging, fight those free radicals and whatnot. And then finally reducing that toxic overload. So like I was saying, switching to natural products, switching to all natural, um, 
products that are going to be free of chemicals, making sure that we're doing as much as we can in our whole house, not just our personal care, but our cleaning products, our food, everything. We want to get rid of the chemicals as much as we can. There are still going to be chemicals out in the world, but if we can control what's in our homes and how we're using and what we're exposing ourselves to, the better our health will be. And then informed self-care is that proper skin care um, and doing whatever we can to boost our health and wellness. So like working with me would be one of those things. Um, so another cool thing I want to share with you guys is face mapping. So face mapping is a, a tool I use where I look at if you, let's say you're having a breakout where is that little acne breakout happening? Or maybe it's a red irritation on your skin. Depending on where it is, there are certain spots on our face that are related to organs and um, lungs and what uh, yeah, our organs and, and whatnot so that we can kind of figure out if it's a hormonal issue, if it's something maybe with our lungs or our stomach or our endocrine system. And oftentimes we can figure out, is it, you know, poor diet or sleep that's playing a role or, you know, what are the problems here? And so this is a very cool tool to look at and kind of figure out what might be playing a role. Now, the benefits of essential oils on skin. I, I know I've already talked a good bit about this, but they are all natural and safe. They are very soothing and cleansing and purifying. One thing that really blew my mind as I got into essential oils and using them on the skin is how one oil can do so many things. So, uh, if I really, if I were stuck on a desert Island, I would either bring lavender or frankincense with me. Why? Because they can do everything. They are like, you know, we, we say lavender is a Swiss army knife of essential oils. It calms, it soothes, it heals, it nourishes, it does all these different things. So if I have a little acne breakout, I can put a little lavender on it. That's going to calm and soothe the redness, the irritation. It's going to heal and cleanse. Um, but also, if I have a cut or a burn on my skin, I could use that lavender. It's going to calm, soothe, heal, nourish. Um, or maybe I have a dry, irritated spot. Again, lavender calm, soothe, nourish, hydrate. So one oil can treat many different skin issues, skin types. Um, it doesn't have to be a, this is the line for oily skin, and this is the line for anti-aging, and this is the line for sensitive skin. So that's the thing that's very interesting about using oils. Um, and the other thing that I love about oils is those properties, the cleansing, soothing, purifying properties, they physically do that, but they also can emotionally do that. So you take a little deep breath of lavender and you're going to very quickly feel that emotional shift of soothing and calming your mind and your body. So I just love that about oils. So it, it affects us on two different ways. Um, Essential oils actually, because of their tiny molecular structure, can actually help our products penetrate deeper into the skin, which means they're going to be further hydrating, nourishing, feeding our skin with those nutrients. Um, they are super antioxidant rich, so they're going to really feed our cells um, that it, to fight those uh, free radicals from aging our skin. So all those things that could damage our skin from the environment and whatnot, these antioxidants are going to help fight that. Uh, it's going to boost our immune system. And um, you really only need a tiny amount. So you use it topically. I highly recommend diluting it with a carrier oil. It'll help it go a little further, but because essential oils are so um, intense, 
you really only need a tiny amount. And by spreading it thinner with a carrier oil actually helps prevent any irritation to the skin and uh, just is beneficial. So what we're going to do is you take one or two drops of your essential oil and you could mix it with your favorite carrier oil, or you could put it into your moisturizer, your cleansers, your lotions, whatever you want. And it's going to boost what's going, what you're doing. Um, the benefit is it also within seconds of applying it to our skin gets into our bloodstream. So it's going to, these essential oils are going to work on a cellular level, not just topically. And so they're going to get into our bloodstream. They're going to go where our bodies need it. And they're going to do what they need to do on a cellular level, which is absolutely amazing. And that takes our skincare to a whole new level. Um, and then they actually leave our bodies. They dissipate out of our bodies after about two hours. So there's no toxic buildup. You're not going to have a overdose of lavender. Um, <laughs> and they are just really fun and cool. We can customize and uh, get creative with them as well. So as I mentioned before, essential oils are not all the same. So uh like I said, they can be labeled 100% pure and be up to 70% adulterated. So that could be that a company takes an oil that's similar, like cinnamon bark and cassia. One is much more expensive than the other and dilute that expensive oil with a lesser oil that comes from the same plant but does not work the same way in our bodies. It actually works completely differently. So the results that you're expecting will not be there. So that, I mean, that's not as bad because you're using something that's still got a natural something in it, but a lot of them are honestly synthetically made in a lab, not even essential oils at all, like no essential oil involves, um, they are chemicals. They are chemicals that are made to mimic the natural essential oils. Um, so you absolutely are not going to get the results from a synthetic um, oil. You're not going to have the same physical reactions in your body um, and they could potentially make you sick. So there are people who use an essential oil, like a lesser essential oil, and they might be like, oh, well, I used this and I thought it was going to help with X, Y, and Z, and it didn't. So all essential oils don't work. No, no, there's a purity factor. And so we do have to think about that and take that into account. And so what doTERRA does is we third-party test our oils, ensuring that it is certified, pure, tested, grade essential oils that truly are as pure as we say they are. A lot of companies may say they test, but they don't publish their third-party testing. We actually publish our third-party testing. Uh, let's see, I have, yeah, I have an oil right here. On the bottom of every bottle of doTERRA oils, you will see a number, see that number? I can go to, um, shoot source to you.com and enter that number and up pops the um, results from the third party testing about this, this oil. And it tells you a little report. There's a lot of stuff like a, it's legit, a scientific report, but it has the summary from the scientists that did it really cool. And not every brand does that. The other thing that I thought was really fascinating is at the top here, the consumeradvocates.org slash essential oils. Um, the, a third party lab did this independent study where they went and they tested 10 different brands of essential oils. They did like, I think lavender tea tree and peppermint or lemon. I can't remember, but it was three different oils for each brand tested for purity and um, adulteration. And of the 10 brands, only three came out completely 100% pure with no synthetic markers. doTERRA was one of them. That says a lot. 
says a lot. So it really is important. I just say, do your research. Honestly, myself, when I got into doTERRA, before I got into doTERRA, I was very judgy. I was using therapeutic grade oils that I thought were pure um, because I got them at a special site for professionals. <laughs> and when I went to a class and learned about purity, I was like, wait a minute, nobody ever taught me about this. Nobody ever talk, talked about the that negative side of this industry. There's a lot of money to be made. So people are cutting these oils and making them lesser and cheaper because they want to make more money. That's what it really comes down to. So I actually did my own research. I went home, I looked up what I was using and I tried to figure out how pure it was. And from what I found, I either couldn't find anything or what I found was really disappointing. And I was using these oils on my baby. So I didn't want to do that. I continue, I, you know, I, I said to myself, I have to switch now that I know we can only do better based on what we know. So, um, just know I was just as judgy. I thought that doTERRA was just expensive oils. No, they are amazing oils that are, uh, the purest in the world. So, and that really plays a huge role in our health and wellness. Um, so now let's get back to skincare. <laughs> when it comes to caring for our skin, I actually have a super secret that I love to share with the world. So it's not really a super secret, is it? But it's all about using a pre-wash oil. So what you want to do is grab, say, your olive oil or your raw coconut oil, and you're going to use a little bit of it, like a dime size amount, and you're going to massage your face with it. It's going to loosen up the dirt, the debris from your pores. It's going to loosen up and remove your makeup naturally you don't need to go out and buy a makeup remover just a little olive oil will do the trick uh and then when you either rinse it off with uh, a washcloth or go straight into cleansing and then remove it your skin feels so supple and soft and it's nourished from the nutrients from this beautiful carrier oil so it is an ultimate game, ch game changer for all skin types. Um, my sensitive skin types that are, are dealing with eczema and psoriasis, things like that, they can actually use this olive oil or coconut oil, um, a pre-wash natural oil, um, and really shift their skin. They, the um, dryness and the tightness and the irritation will calm down because this oil is feeding and nourishing it with vitamins and nutrients that our skin needs. Uh, it's healing and soothing it. Um, and then if you're an acneic skin type, it's actually cleaning out those pores from the bacteria and the gunk that builds up and causes the breakouts. So whether you are acneic sensitive and then even that aging you know you want to fight aging well this is the first step when it comes to aging you want to be nourishing your skin the more nourishment in your skin the less fine lines and wrinkles that is absolutely key right so here's a quick little recipe for a lovely blend that you could make with some frankincense or if you, and some lavender um, to really help further nourish and promote cellular healing in your skin. And you can use the pre-wash all by itself. This could be just an oil cleanser for you, or you can use it and then go straight into cleansing. Now, I have talked a bit about natural carrier oils. Let's talk a little bit more because there are so many amazing carrier oils. You want to make sure whatever oil you're using is a natural um, carrier oil that's going to feed your skin. So you want to use something like jojoba. Jojoba is the closest to our natural sebum, the oil in our, in our skin. It is very vitamin rich. It's going to help repair and heal the skin. It's full of anti-inflammatory properties, and it's very calming and soothing for an eczema or rosacea. It's great for all skin types. Um, 
and it won't clog your pores and it absorbs very quickly. So this is one that jojoba oil is something that massage therapists use all the time because very few people have a reaction to it. Um, and it is, uh, fat easily absorbed. Sweet almond. I absolutely adore sweet almond oil. If you can use it, it is great for brightening the skin. It is full of nutrients. You can use it on your hair, your skin. It's great for your nails. Um, again, won't clog the skin. It's a little slower at absorption, but not too bad. And bursting with antioxidants. Uh, evening primrose. Now this is one that's a little thicker. It is really going to help with cellular health and wellness, the elasticity in our skin. This is wonderful for a dry skin um, and a more mature skin because it's going to help um, nourish it and help with the um, cellular regeneration that's going to help make it look more youthful. Um, but it is a very thick, slow absorbing oil. So what you want to do is ten usually blend it with something else. Um, so I'll make a blend with olive oil or argon oil and add that in. And it's excellent for healing eczema, rosacea, um, psoriasis, just really calming, soothing, healing, feeding, nourishing, and that cellular regeneration. It's just amazing. Um, and some people take evening primrose oil internally as well. You could do that as well. Uh, it'd be great for your body. Um, again, I've talked a lot about olive oil. Olive oil is so great, full of antioxidants, um, really nourishing and great for dry, mature, sensitive skin types. It is a little slower absorption, so it's going to stand on your skin a little bit longer. It's going to take a little longer to absorb, but you will have glowing, gorgeous, beautiful skin. And who doesn't have olive oil in their kitchen cabinet? So you don't even have to go out and get some. You probably have it and you can just use it right away. Um, so that free oil wash, you could literally just start with just plain essential, uh, plain olive oil. You don't have to make a fancy blend with a lavender or anything, but you could just start there and it's going to be a game changer right there. Argon oil is another wonderful oil, great for hair, skin, nails, everything. It's full of nutrients. It's very hydrating, calming, soothing, brightening for the skin. And it's great for even the most sensitive skins like a baby's skin. So it's going to heal eczema. It's going to heal skin irritations. It actually heals acne. So another wonderful oil that is, it's a wide spectrum as far as who it helps basically everybody. Um, and then raw coconut oil. I absolutely love raw coconut oil. That's the kind that gets hard in the winter and soft in the summer. You cook with it. This one is fantastic for nourishing and feeding your skin. It's got the medium fatty chain acids that actually are proven to be antiviral, antimicrobial, antibacterial. So especially like an oily skin, acneic skin type, you want to use that to heal and soothe and protect your skin. Same with more of an eczema, psoriasis, rosacea, because our skin is so compromised when we have a condition like that, that this oil is going to help heal, soothe, and protect. And so those are very important and it actually promotes collagen production. So that's pretty cool. So when it comes to skincare, um, you also want to do exfoliation. Um, you want to you want to make sure you're exfoliating your skin and removing all the dead skin cells, and um, this is going to help you have a glowing, beautiful skin. So, a couple ways that we can do it: we can do it with a facial brush. We can use these little silicone scrubs. Um, or one of those sonic brushes. Um, the sonic brushes I would avoid if you have sensitive skin or aging skin, just because they're a little bit too intense. Um, but you can use a little, the little silicone scrubs are kind of awesome. They have these little nubbies on them that really help clean out the pores. I would just do this maybe once or twice a week 
or you could always make a beautiful mask or scrub. Um, so fruit enzymes are really going to help break down the skin, uh, the dead skin cells and naturally exfoliate your skin. Um, I love to use um, yogurt, which is lactic acid. Again, going to gently exfoliate the skin. Um, There's so many different types. The B, so alpha hydroxy acids are going to help boost collagen in our skin. They're going to break down the dead skin cells while also improving our skin health and the tone of our skin. So there's a couple different types that you can use that are going to feed your skin. And then the beta hydroxy acids are the salicylic acids. That's good for oily or acneic skin type. But if you're not oily or acneic, you don't really want to use those because they're too much. You only want to use a scrub maybe once a week. Okay. You don't want to overdo it because if you over exfoliate, it actually dries your skin out because your skin is then going to start producing, or it's going to start producing even more oil. So, um, it can be a problem. (laughs) This is my favorite oatmeal scrub. It's an easy recipe that you can make with things at home, oatmeal, yogurt, honey, and the apricot kernels you can leave or take. You don't have to have them in there. Um, you can get those at, um, shop like a, where you would make, get products to make soaps with. Um, but I love this because it's so gentle and effective. Every skin type can use it and benefit from it. Uh, the oatmeal is calming, soothing, healing, full of anti-inflammatory properties to treat and soothe your skin. The honey is a natural humectant that pulls in hydration and moisture from the air. And then the yogurt is that lactic acid that's going to exfoliate. So it brightens and nourishes our skin as well. So absolutely amazing. You might want to take a quick screenshot. Whoops. Uh, And then of course you could make a little scrub with some brown sugar and olive oil. You could, honestly, you could use this on your lips. You could use it on your feet, your whole body, whatever you want. Just if you use it in the tub, say like for a whole body scrub, you want to give the tub a quick rinse afterwards because it gets slippery from the olive oil and you don't want like your husband to get in the tub, slip and bang himself and then hate you. So (laughs) Uh, very easy though. And again, all natural, beautiful ingredients that are going to rejuvenate your lips. Uh, And then masks. Masks are so wonderful for nourishing and feeding our skin. Um, We have so many different types of masks. So there are clay masks that have clays that are really going to pull out impurities in our skin. But we also have nourishing masks that have plant extracts and other ingredients that are going to feed and soothe and calm our skin. So depending on what we're dealing with, depends on what we might want to make our masks with um, or what an esthetician is going to choose to use on you. But you could mask maybe once um, once a week with a cool mask. Um, so some oils that help brighten the skin when it comes to aging Brightening is one of those things that we like to focus on. These are some of my favorite oils. I absolutely adore all of these. They are very, all very calming, soothing, hydrating, but they have a lot of um, anti-inflammatory ingredients and brightening ingredients. Um, Down here in the star, you can see I have a great little mask that you can make with a little olive oil, yogurt, honey, and some lemon, and that's going to really help brighten and even out your skin tone. Um, And here are two of my other favorite masks that I love. The green clay mask is wonderful. Again, great for every skin type. It will nourish, feed, pull out impurities, calm, soothe, hydrate. It just makes everybody's skin beautiful. And I just absolutely adore it. I have a couple different oil blends there that you could um, use with it. You could do rose and geranium. You could do lemon and geranium, lavender and chamomile with geranium, uh, or frankincense geranium and lavender, all of these very calming, healing, nourishing to the skin. And then the hydrating dark chocolate mask is 
incredible, smells divine, you want to lick it off your face, don't because it's just raw cocoa, but it literally all the ingredients you could eat. It's divine and it makes your skin so soft and hydrated. Um, so yeah. And then, yeah, there's just some tools and things that massage th- that as estheticians use to care for skin. So there is facial massage. Um, facial massage really helps increase circulation, tones our muscles. It's like exercise for the face when you think about it. And it stimulates the collagen production and moving that lymph, which sometimes causes the bags under our eyes or the dark circles. It just really helps detoxify and nourish and feed our skin. So massage is super important. Now it's kind of awkward sometimes to do it ourselves, but there are some tools that you can use that are great. Uh, You could use a gua sha stone and this is very easy. You just kind of do these like scraping moves that go up um, along your face. And I actually have a video that shows you how to do this, Um, but it's so easy and your skin feels so good and your, your muscles, they get relaxed from it. It's so great, especially at the end of the day to do as part of your uh, routine. Absolutely amazing. This 24k bar is so cool it literally you turn it on and it just vibrates and it you move it along the skin similarly to the um gua sha and it does the same things it's giving you that massage it feels amazing it's boosting your collagen increasing the blood circulation helping the cellular health of your skin and it's so relaxing. So this is another tool that you can easily get. I'll make another video and post that as well so that you have that to uh, go to and learn about how to use the bar. Um, So easy um, and fantastic for your skin. And then there's facial cupping. So facial cupping is kind of cool. You may have heard of cupping where people get it on their bodies and it leaves these like big welts. If you're careful with the little cups that you use on your face, you're really just kind of suctioning and moving the lymph and whatnot. Um, but you're not going to leave these big marks on your face. You just have to be careful with it. I, the first time I did it, I got really excited and I was like getting lines to disappear on somebody's like forehead and I got a little overexcited and they ended up with like a little dark spot. It wasn't too bad, but you know, it can do it. So you don't want to leave it too long. You just want to kind of keep it moving. Again, I will make a video about facial cupping um, because this is especially cool because it really, it plumps up the skin. It feeds and um, nourishes the skin, but it really within one treatment, you can see a difference in your face. And so it's especially nice if you're going somewhere, maybe do it right, you know, as you're getting ready or something so that your skin looks like divine. Um, And yeah, so again, just a quick review. You want to um, be drinking your water, taking your supplements, eating, feeding your body the nutrients that are going to support your body on a cellular level. You want to get that proper sleep. You definitely want to balance your stress. Try and do some meditation, some yoga, using your oils, all the things. And then decreasing the toxins in our life. You want to use those natural products and the essential oils to reduce that toxic load and improve your overall health and wellness. And then have that healthy skincare uh, regimen. Um, And I, of course, am here to help you with all of this. So um, as you can see, these pictures on the side, this is my mom and dad and my mom and her mom when she was a baby and me and my mom. And so genetics do play a role in our glowing, beautiful skin. My mom's, you know, gorgeous, um, but we also have to take care of our skin. If we are doing things that are affecting our skin, it's going to play a role. So we want to make sure we are using good products that are going to take care of our skin. So I am going to end the share um, and just sum up with, I hope this was helpful. I know it was a lot of information, but I am here to help you and to guide you in this process. So 
If you have any questions, please reach out. Please set up a skin consult with me and we can go from there. We can figure out what your skin needs, what your goals are and how we can achieve them. And if you need guidance on natural solutions, I'm here to help you with that as well. So I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope this is very helpful for you and let's work together. Let's help you embrace your natural beauty so that you can shine in your innate natural beauty.